That was Study in C Major by Terega. Let's have a lesson and discussion on this work now. Uh, follow the lesson for free and pick up all the tips, but if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this work, and there's a link for that in the description. This piece I have available as, a, as an individual selection off the site, but it's also in my Grade 3 Repertoire Lessons book. So in my Repertoire Lessons book, there's a couple pages of prep before, so if you're interested in, in doing the whole book, you can do that. But today's lesson is for just the individual selection, uh, just some advice on the piece. So um, this is a great piece. Um, I usually introduce this to students at the end of their grade three experience because it has a couple of, of bar chords and a pivot chord in it. So those are new concepts for, for students at that level. Um, but I really love doing it because it's a, it's a lovely little piece, nice melody embedded in the arpeggios. And with the inclusion of those new techniques, it gives students a new challenge to work on. This piece has been attributed to Torega for, for a long time and it's in many, 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 many published books. Um, I've never seen a manuscript for it or heard of anyone who has seen it. So in, if you want, you can just say it's attributed to, to Rega, but um, the authorship, I haven't as of yet seen a manuscript for it and, and I've asked around quite a bit. But it's, it's pretty established as a piece by Torega. So regardless, really nice piece, right? So this piece has a couple of... Um, very straightforward technical elements. It it has arpeggios, you know, and it also has an accented little melody. So in the first measure, you can see some little accent marks. That's marking the melody, and you can kind of trace that through. It's usually the note played by the A finger. So in terms of your musical balance, um, we want to make sure that in the hierarchy here that the melody is at the top of the hierarchy. So the, the, the listener can clearly hear the melody popping out of the texture. You know, if it's, bar if it's buried, you know. the accompaniment notes are loud and then it gets buried. So at the top we have the melody with the A finger. And then we want a certain amount of presence from the bass to cushion the sound, sustain the harmony through the bar. And then the accompaniment notes, usually played with I and M, we want to soften quite a bit. So it's melody, bass, accompaniment. So this I and M finger, you know, we want it to be present enough that we can hear the harmony, but we want to make sure that we leave a lot of room for the A finger to pop out of the texture. There's lots of ways to do that. For most students, I really just recommend practicing doing a deeper follow-through 
with that A finger. So, you know, um, as an exercise, you could touch your palm. You wouldn't do that when you're playing the piece, but just as an exercise, you could do that. Usually that's enough to bring that note really out of the texture, as long as you're softening the I and M finger. Um, another method, this is, I don't usually introduce this to students at this level, but another method could be to practice doing a rest stroke on that note. You're doing a rest stroke just with the A finger, which is a, a bit of a challenge for some students. But if you practice that way for a little while, and then switch back to all free stroke, which is more desirable in performance, um, you're the muscle memory of doing a rest stroke with that finger kind of encourages it to dig in. It's kind of amazing if you get a student to, to do rest strokes with that finger for like a week, when we switch back to free stroke, they just play that finger a little bit louder just from the, just the muscle memory of bringing, of signaling out that one finger. So that's another uh, practice method of, uh, available to you. So that's, that's pretty much it though. Bring out the melody, nice phrasing, musical balance, um, and then some, some specifics in terms of bar chords and pivot chords. But we'll address that when we get to it. So let's just do a walkthrough of the piece. So here, we, we're, because the first finger is sustaining the G, to slide the second finger down to F. That way three and one are available to grab the next chord. Here's your first bar chord. Just remember a lot of the pressure of a bar should be just the gravity of your arm just weighing down on the strings like this. It's like your elbow is just falling towards the ground. You don't need to squeeze really hard. I have lessons on the, on the website on the lesson page about playing bar chords. You should check those out if you're having trouble. But nevertheless, just remember, you need to be close to the fret on each string. So close to the fret on each string and the weight of your arm should contribute to the bar so that you don't get tired of clamping your fingers or you don't clamp too much. You can try playing it without your thumb, which teaches you that you don't need to clamp in order to play the bar. You can play it without your thumb at all if you were thumbless. Having your thumb there is a nice little anchor to the, to the situation, but we don't want to clamp too hard. Measure 10 um, uses a pivot bar. So what that means is that we're playing the C major here, and our first finger's on C, and then we're going to pivot into a bar. So we won't let go of that C note. Instead, we'll just fold our finger down into a bar. And then pivot out. Pivot on, pivot out. Pivot bar release. But we're keeping our first finger on that second note, on the second string C, and just creating a bar and then releasing the bar. It can take students a little while to get used to that, but helpful in this particular situation. This is the most difficult bar for students at the grade three level, is doing a full bar over all six strings. But just remember, weight of the arm helps contribute to the bar. Each, str each string must be fretted close to the fret. So if you have an angle, it'll buzz, right? Because that's not close to the string there. So if you can't see it from your angle, just use a mirror and look at your finger in the mirror and say, like, are you actually close? Because sometimes I'll, I'll look at the student and I'll say, I'll say, you're not actually close to the string, sorry, close to the fret 
on that particular string and they'll say, yes, I am. But then if I like take a picture with my camera, they'll realize, oh, there's a big gap there. Anyway, like I said, if you're having trouble with bars, you should check out my, my bar lessons on the site. Here's that pivot again. Short and sweet, very nice little like piece to include. Um, just, yeah, I always teach this piece to students because it just, it has, uh, it's such a great musical balance exercise and it has some new things to introduce, new concepts to introduce before they move on to a more difficult work in like, in like grade four range. So hope you enjoy it, um, check it out. And if you need more dedicated help, um, you might consider looking at my grade three repertoire lessons book as well.